Welcome back. Lake Superior shipwrecks fascinate us with their haunting past. There were hundreds of vessels swallowed up by the big lake. Songs, books, movies all try to capture the mystery and intrigue, but nothing compares to seeing it with your own eyes. And you are about to do just that as we go diving into the past. On a beautiful morning at Bayfield Marina, the hay boy would be lost. We meet up with a group of men on a mission. Just after sunrise, we're loading up the boat, Hey Boy. We're tagging along today on their trip to the Apostle Islands. Wow, you guys know how to, uh, how to go boating. After weeks of planning Hyperdrive. and dozens of emails and phone calls, they are finally ready. Who are these guys? This is our Great Lakes Shipwreck Preservation Society. Started in 1996, members of the group have been using their personal vacation days. We'll set that mooring up and then we could tie to it. And spending their own money, all to give the famed Lake Superior shipwrecks some much deserved, tender, loving care. We like to preserve shipwrecks and, and use them and see them and, and photograph them. And Today's mission is to combine a little work with the task of capturing images of a wreck, the Knock Bay. This project was Part of it's just having fun, but, but part of it was to get some video for the Bayfield Maritime Museum. Are we almost here? We're about a mile away. Despite his humble demeanor, Ken Merriman's videos of Great Lakes shipwrecks are legendary. This is the last dive of the weekend, so we're going to go out and hopefully get some footage on the Knock Bay. This part's all buried. This is the keel here. The Knock Bay was a schooner barge, meaning she could sail on her own, but could also carry cargo and be towed like a barge. So you guys suit up and we'll work on the mooring lines. Before the fun part of the dive begins, he's done this before. Joe Musial and Ken Knutson will do some work at the request of the Wisconsin Park Service, diving to inspect an underwater cement block. Known as a mooring block, these have been placed near many shipwreck sites, so visiting diving boats don't have to drop their own anchor, which could disturb or damage wrecks. Found it? Yep. Good. Simple? We found it. What condition? So it's sitting at an angle with a big loop in it. Mooring blocks need to be checked often and repaired frequently. So does it need to be flipped over or is it no. good? You think it's, it's good? It's half to... buried in the sand. Oh, okay. So it's sitting good. Once they get a new rope installed and mark it with a floating buoy, the sightseeing can begin. We're good. Time to dive. It's a near perfect day, lots of sun, minimal waves, but as is always the case in Lake Superior, the water is a bit chilly. The first thing is, is you get this tremendous rush of cold <laughs> when you jump in and onto a shipwreck in Lake Superior. Uh, but, then, but then that settles down and, and you go down and you know, it's quiet. The Bayfield Marine Museum is getting some great video from today's dive. You can actually see the Knock Bay from the surface if you look closely. She rests in only about 12 feet of water. It was early fall on October 6th, 1905. A steamer was towing the Knock Bay, setting out on a 500 mile journey from Bayfield to Bay City, Michigan. She was carrying 600,000 board feet of beautiful hemlock lumber. The crew was eating lunch at the rear of the ship and no one noticed the one thing you don't want on a wooden vessel that's carrying even more wood a fire. The crew tried to save the precious cargo, tossing as much overboard as they could. Eventually, they were forced to abandon ship. And then the, the beam, or the, the keel, I bet it was 14 by 14 square. Just a huge piece of tree. Wow. Just the workmanship is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and and even after all these years. No lives were lost when the Knock Bay sank. Records show the fire started in the forward part of the ship, near the boiler, this boiler. Now, lying dead cold, never to start another fire again, almost as if it's being punished for what it did. Now, over 100 years later, the Knock Bay has a different purpose, to help us remember, to stir our imagination, reminding us of the sacrifice, courage, and even heroism of our ancestors. In part two of this series, amazing video from shipwrecks such as the SS America steamer, now lying 80 feet down in Washington Harbor of Isle Royal, and the 532-foot Chester A. Congdon, the first million-dollar shipping loss in Lake Superior history, when we take you diving into the past tomorrow night at 10 o'clock.